Hi friends and welcome home. Welcome home to Mark's Minis. I say home because not only is it my home, but it's home to a lot of beginning painters that are very excited about the results that have been able to achieve with these new The Army Painter Speed Paints. And we've been having crazy fun experimenting on all kinds of projects. So with today's that. video will be short and fun. It's not a tutorial. I'm just documenting how I use speed paints on my new project for the upcoming game convention Kublacon. It's the 60th anniversary of the Doctor Who franchise and I am the first one on the planet to apply speed paints to Games Workshop Daleks from the Doctor Who franchise. Yes, it's true. Many years ago, Games Workshop held the rights to Doctor Who and made some miniatures. Good luck trying to find a set on your own. So though. this project is quick and fun and let's see how I use speed paints to brush up these Doctor Who miniatures. And you'll want to watch all the way through because this video is loaded with tips and tricks about all different aspects of our hobby. And you'll want to stay to the very end because we have a wrap up and a very exciting preview of upcoming videos. Remember, it's short, it's not a tutorial, and it's just for fun. Please enjoy. Hi friends and welcome back to the lab at Mark's Minis. Well, this is going to be a relaxed build and we're just going to have some fun putting together some ancient Games Workshop Daleks. So just think of it as a relaxing, easy review of assembly modeling techniques and we're going to throw down some speed paints over bright silver. We're getting all kinds of cool effects by putting different colors of speed paints over bright silver. So think of that as our priming, the bright silver. So here we are getting into a typical Games Workshop project. We have already washed the sprue in soap and water and there was quite a bit of mold release compound there. It had sort of dried uh, and became a little bit hard to remove over the years. Um, but with the toothbrush and some persistence we got all of that off and we did successfully do all the priming in bright silver. So you don't see this every day, a bunch of Dalek heads glued onto a stick. As I always say, life is easier with a set of micro diamond needle files, link down below. We have now successfully primed in bright silver some Dalek chassis. Again, you don't see this too often. Life is easier with a set of quality sprue cutters, link down below. After some test fitting, we found that, of course, the pegs don't really go in the holes, so we're going to sand those smooth, and we're going to scrape off the paint so that the Tamaya Extra Thin Liquid Cement can work its magic to the max. Ah uh, yes, when I discovered this stuff, which was fairly recently, it was definitely a nerdgasm, but not nearly as big as the one I got from the Army Painter Speed Paints. That epiphany was so impactful, it drove me to launch this entire channel, which is now sporting like, what, a dozen videos about speed paints, and a bunch of other fun, cool hobby stuff that might be of interest to you. Please check it out. As you may know, this stuff is a solvent, and we are actually welding together these Dalek armored chassis. Now, if Games Workshop decided to keep the rights to the Doctor Who franchise, this would be the most powerful faction. They have been documented as letting millions of galaxies burn under their conquests, and I don't think anything in the 40k universe could hold up to that. Because, you know, they got nearly infinite BBC magic behind them. Uh, infinite power, infinite shields, uh, or at least rudimentary time travel. So, yeah, you know, guess what? You know, they win. So, because of the nature of this project, I have to switch to the basing first. Because I'll have to paint the Daleks while they're on top of the bases after they've been installed there. So the idea is they're going to be hovering over this debris field. And to facilitate that, I'm using a couple coffee mixing sticks 
glued together and shoved up under their chassis. Yeah, it's uh, a little indignified for the Dalek. So after the epoxy has dried, I quickly shape the flight stand with a Dremel tool. So I've got this cool little Litco laser cut plywood uh, base stand for a skirmish type unit. It holds 10 and I'm putting the squares around tape so that they won't stick into the base when I apply the basing material. So I'm taking a fairly conventional approach to preparing the base and the material that will go on top of it and we'll just have some fun using a primer and some varnish to seal and protect the laser cut plywood from the next steps. Of course we don't need to watch the whole thing, just the beginning and the end will be sufficient. Your time saved courtesy of At Marks Minis. Okay, now the part that everyone gets mesmerized by, like it's some sort of hypno-toad. I don't know why, but it seems like on YouTube everyone likes to watch things being mixed. And things that involve mixing for the basing material seems to get a lot of view time and hits. So, here it is. Enjoy the mixing of the basing material for my Dalek flight stand. Of course I'm using drywall repair compound because it's super cheap and I have a big box of it. And when it soaks up the varnish in later steps, it becomes hard as stone and it is like pre-manufactured hard gaming pieces and it's quite nice. The primer not only darkens it up a bit, but also it adds latex and possibly some epoxy-like compounds that help the drywall repair compound maintain its shape and become more stiff after it cures. A little bit of hobby gravel adds some texture. Now what we're going for here is a war zone that is littered with spaceship debris, and it's a pretty easy effect to attain. Now once that's dried, I can go inside the squares of tape and do the individual basing textures. And they don't look like much now, but when they're done, they end up to be high quality, solid and durable gaming pieces. I've marked the bases where I want to glue down the flight stands for the Daleks. Now of course the fit of these pieces in the squares is a bit rough at first, but we're going to fix that with a little sanding. Trivial. So now we're just building up some color along with the varnish, and as that soaks into the drywall repair compound, what we get is very solid, high quality, durable gaming pieces with a nice fit. Now we've got a base color and a texture going. Let's come down with some speed paint and add some depth. So yes, here I'm using speed paint like a wash, but that is not its most powerful ability. In fact, it's one of its minor ones. Now we have some fun here taking random bits of sprue and forming it to look like random bits of spaceship debris. That was fun and pretty easy. Now you see here I've got a nice looking base built up on the front corner, but now I want to put some gravel around the area where I'm going to glue the Dalek flight stand. But I want to keep that area clear. So I'm just going to use a wire and tease this super glue around the area I want to keep clear.
Ta-da! And now I have 10 bases ready to accept Dalek flight stands. And now finally, it's time to have fun with speed paints over bright silver. After doing some research, I found Daleks can really be any color you want, so it's time to experiment and see how different colors of speed paint behave over this bright silver. And this is the first video of its kind in the universe no one else before in the history of humankind has used speed paints on Daleks. Particularly Games Workshop Daleks. Yes, you saw it here first on Mark's Minis. I am the first. Haha, -ha, ho ho. So friends, this is all just paint by numbers. Let's enjoy some speed painting while we rock out to the music. Oh yes, the magic blue is striking over Bright Silver. Sand Golem was okay too, not my favorite though. So the bases look weird here because I tried to get away with painting a glowy effect under the Dalek, but it didn't work out because the Dalek casts quite a dark shadow and it defeated the purpose of trying to paint anything bright underneath it. In the background you can see some old school Cybermen that are also part of this project. In fact, they came on the same sprues as the Dalek. And everybody loves how blood red appears over the bright silver. Now that is a nice effect. Now notice how often I have to keep reloading the brush. That's because speed paints like to be glopped on. You need to get quite a bit on there so that the effects of the speed paint can happen and the pigments will pull away from the medium at the highlights and collect in the recesses between the highlights. So the scenario calls for an extermination team of 10 Daleks hovering over the debris field and looking for something, and I think we've managed to pull it off. Anyway, that's what the different colors of speed paints look over Bright Silver Prime, and hopefully you came away with some ideas from that. In any case, I look forward to deploying these Dalek in our RPG scenario, where I hope the players brought a change of underwear and hopefully at least half a brain, because otherwise they might all be, you know, exterminated. So, you know, if you're still with me at this point, you gotta be a fan of either Doctor Who or Speed Paint. So, let me know with the like and subscribe. But don't tune out yet, because I'm gonna have a wrap up with some exciting news for upcoming videos. So, thanks for staying with me till the end. Please, if this project was interesting to you in any way, let me know with hitting the like and subscribe. So I hope you enjoyed my little project and we're going to be running a RPG module at KublaCon in the Doctor Who universe and it's going to be a lot of fun. Lots of interesting painted miniatures and train mitts and I hope you can join and don't us. don't forget KublaCon, Burlingame, California, end of May.
Badges for the convention have been available for a long time, but they're going fast. Tickets for the painting events and classes for KublaCon go on sale May 1st. So it's coming up fast. Stay on top of it. Now, sneak peek at exciting upcoming videos. Next video up is a awesome interview with the incredible David Powell. He is a really high level artist does amazing work he is a professional instructor going to be one of the instructors at KublaCon or our local gaming convention. he has a great story and is going to have really useful tips for us new painters and furthermore he has agreed to future collaborations so that means there's some really high quality content in the works for us as we continue this journey and speaking about the journey that we're on more interesting video in the world about our recent experience in boulder creek colorado where we went to a games workshop store there and had our first experience painting 40k it was a lot of fun we got a lot of painting in and i took a master class on airbrush from the great dev sodegar really fine artist and he also has agreed to future collaborations so we have some really exciting things lined up in our journey to become better painters please stay with us and you know, the best way to do that is to subscribe. Thanks so much, and we'll see you next time. Oh, and by the way, don't forget to check out the Doctor Who Miniatures page on Facebook, who gave me support and encouragement throughout the making of this video. Thanks so much.